Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to episode number three of Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. This week will be a special week because we will have three episodes coming out this week, so we'll have one episode coming out on Tuesday today. We'll have one episode coming out on Thursday, of course, and then one episode coming out on Saturday. I know for sure I have shot the entirety of this episode and uh, Thursday's episode, but I cannot for the life of me remember if I actually shot the episode for um, Saturday, but we will get there as we cross that bridge, ladies and gentlemen, you know how it always goes. We have Hooter on the team, of course, and we are just switch training him right now with Gator. Um, Hooter will become a big player by the end of this episode, if it's the episode that I believe it is. I believe today we are going and visiting Sprout Tower, if I'm correct, which is, I wouldn't say it's like the biggest element of this game, because there's a lot of other things we have yet to venture into. But I think it's like our first big adventure into the Johto region, which is always really fun. Um, you know, you could claim that like the whole town itself but is part of it, but um, I think the Bellsprout Tower, or Sprout Tower, it's just called, really gives us like the vibe of what this game is. Like compared to the first game, the first game is very like, almost city orientated the way that it's designed like there's all these big massive cities and all this stuff going on whereas like this game is really more like a like the country laid back version like things are more traditional things are more relaxed in the johto region as compared to kanto which is a very interesting switch up from what we've seen in the pokemon series even moving forward like uh, i i think the only thing that comes close to it is either uh, legends arceus or I would have to go with um, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games where like, they give that sort of vibe too, but only because there's that large exploration open world element to the game. Whereas this game does that in a way that's not, it doesn't need to be over the top in the way that it's doing it, I guess is the best way that I can word that. Like it is, explorative and things feel natural but in a way that like it doesn't need to take as much space as it does in those games and I, I really hope that makes sense like the point that i'm trying to convey there it's really difficult to get that point across unless you played like gen 1 and then jump into gen 2 and then of course go into gen 3 and you'll see the difference between all three of them i would say the biggest difference between one two and three is three has a ton of water and is more like gen 1 Gen 1 is more city orientated and Gen 2 feels more urban, um, like um, lore driven, things like that. Like there's a lot of stories throughout the Johto region. And I always really like that element of storytelling where like you have to go out of your way to find some of the pieces to put together. But that's just me. I know other people really like it. It's like plot, 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 plot. Um, to those that like that, I agree with you in a let's play if i'm gonna be brutally honest but i think i've played through this region enough that i can give like an overall good gist as to what's going on and then we could elaborate on that but i do like i said i think hooter is going to get a ton of exp this episode just solely because we're going in sprout tower there's gonna be a lot of bell sprouts hooter as soon as he learns a good flying type move is going to have an advantage against all of those pokemon it's going to be a good layup for the entirety of the episode. So I know I'm notorious for doing that. That's a very big introduction to the episode, almost taking up about four minutes of your time, but that really is what this episode is going to consist of. You know, we'll get some wild encounters, we'll get some trainer encounters, all that good stuff, and we'll just be continuing to progress through this game. I mean, what else can we really do, you know? That's it, and this is, yeah, I missed that little divot there that you can actually move across the area, which in retrospect, as I'm seeing it now, I'm like, average Joe, you're a dummy, but at the same point in time, I do kind of hold the game. They should have put like one more space there so it's like abundantly clear that you have that room to walk with, but I don't know. That, that's just how this game works. You know, like, that's sometimes just what this game will do to you. Sometimes it, 
It grabs you and doesn't let you go. But what are you gonna do? It's all part of it. And there's a soda pop. Gotta have your soda pop. Hooter put me to sleep. Hoo hoo, you son of a bitch. I... I say that, and I know I'll state this publicly. Because we're playing, and I primarily play this game at night, as you can see through all the settings over the... all the Let's Plays we've done of this. I want an Umbreon on my team for the first time ever. That is going to be a teammate, I'm pretty sure. And Umbreon is really good at doing exactly what I hate Pokemon doing. It is really good at causing status effects, putting Pokemon to sleep, uh, causing confusion, all that good stuff. It's a tanky Pokemon that's built to just outlast. And that's what a lot of these early type Pokemon are really good at doing. And it, it infuriates me. And I think the reason that I want Umbreon on the team is because I know Umbreon can do the same amount of mental damage that these Pokemon do to me. Like, just drive the person that we're battling up a wall. <laughs> oh, it makes this first part really stink, but I think in the long term, it's gonna make the ending of this Let's Play really good because we're gonna be the trainer doing it to other Pokemon. But like, Umbreon comes out first, sets up, does a whole bunch of mischief and then all the other Pokemon just come in and destroy the team. But early on in the game, man, when it is happening to your Pokemon, loud ass car. Taking that one off the list for the Savage Joe episode. Um, no, but uh, yeah, when it's happening to you this early in the game, it becomes infuriating. Like, it's... Ugh. I, I can't even explain, like, how aggravated I get at it. Like, it... It drives me up a wall when it happens. It's just remarkably bad. Oh, Rattata here. It is alarming that Gator is level 11 and we can't one-shot a Rattata. That, that's... Not speaking to his special stats all that much, which is kind of alarming for me. I did, for those interested, I sat down today, and today is, what is the date? May 15th, and I drew out my final team. I had a good idea, but I was, I wasn't quite sure on who our final team member would be, but I think I got it all drawn out. I know all the Gen 2 Pokemon that I want on the team, and I get one, surprisingly, in the next episode, so... If you're interested in seeing a new teammate added, check out the episode coming out tomorrow. Or, coming out Thursday, it is... Not a surprise, but... To me, it was a surprise, like, how early I could actually get that Pokemon, because I thought I had to wait, like, a much longer time than I actually needed to, but... It's really cool. And I think next episode we end up earning our first gym badge anyway, so yeah, check that one out for sure. We'll get a new permanent team member, and we'll get a new gym badge. So that's all exciting stuff there. I do, for those who love the team member, I do want to fully disclose, I don't know if Hooter will be a permanent team member. I think, I think he may have a replacement in the future. I think it's an important one. I don't think it's... I just wanted to replace him because he's uh, a bird in the early game. I do think the Pokemon we are replacing him with is going to be a pretty pivotal one. So, that's good news. You know, we're, we're not just getting rid of him to get rid of him. But I think we are quite a while before that even happens. I think we'll get the majority of our team before we say goodbye to Hooter, so... We'll get to see him for a good majority of this Let's Play. I'm pretty sure about that. That's, I feel very confident in that statement. That's what I should say there. And here we go. We got a bug trainer. And 
this should be pretty easy. I mean, Hooter only knows Tackle at this point in time, which is really infuriating. But I think as long as we keep seeing Caterpies here, I might leave Hooter in the main slot. And see if we can get Hooter some really good EXP, because that would be really nice. Like, fingers crossed, no massive damage moves or anything like that. And we could just continue to progress forward. And as I say that, I am plucking off some excess fur from the dog here, because she is shedding massively. She has an appointment at the groomers tomorrow. But she is shedding like a lion all over the house. But here we go. Now we go against Weedle. Weedle's probably going to be the only thing that poses a threat because it could actually poison us. But we outspeed there. It missed on that first hit. We're pretty good moving forward. Hooter leveled up. And Hooter still did not learn a flying type move. This is like the bane of this Let's Play, I feel like. You'll see it a lot. No, actually, you don't, because I cut out an hour of gameplay on the next episode. That's right. Um, the Pokemon that I catch that are Gen 2 Pokemon that are like excellent, really great, however you wanted to find them. For whatever reason, it feels like in this specific region, Pokemon take a long, long time to learn moves that like actually affect their special stats, which is, for me, when I'm playing through these Let's Plays, I know I've shared this before, if you're looking for somebody who's going to 100% the game, this is not the Let's Play for you. But for myself, what I look for is a team that can beat the game, that is almost generation specific, I try to make as little exceptions as possible. You know, I think in, um... The next Let's Play for Pokemon, we have a Pearl Nuzlocke coming up, so that's not going to be the case there. But when I'm doing a casual Let's Play, I try to like really explore the region and just kind of have fun with it. And I think a lot of times, for myself, the biggest thing is like I like to fill my team with a lot of glass cannons. And I know a lot of people like to do that. Some people like to have different strategic ways that they play through it but for myself i find the most fun to be is to plow through the appoint opponent's teams and just manhandle them that is how i have the most fun in these let's plays and that's why when you watch a nuzlocke you're going to see my team is going to be very over leveled throughout the entirety of the nuzlocke like that that's just part of it so it stinks when we get in a position like this we're like we have hooter who is doing pretty dang well. But he's by no means like ready to go and take on like anything serious right now, which like kind of stinks. It's like he can't get a massive amount of EXP. Let's go heal up. We're healing, 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 healing. Come back anytime now. Okay. I likely will. Thank you, motorcycle. That's what I needed in my day. You to go by and just go da 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 <laughs> Looks like here I'm paused for a second. Hopefully not too long. Might have ran to the restroom or something along those lines. I need to do a much better job vetting these episodes. That's all I have to say. I know I definitely do a good job in the next couple episodes, but this one, I honestly cannot remember all the hoopla involved while I was recording, so. 
There may be an extended period of pause here, maybe a minute or two. Looks like it resolves itself pretty quickly when I'm looking at the actual length of the video here, but we shall see. We shall see. It's been a hot minute. A hot minute thus far. I think I might have just ran down to get a package or something from my front porch. Because it was a weekend day, if I recall correctly, that I actually recorded this. So I just probably likely ran down, got the package, put it up, opened it up just to make sure the contents were correct, and then moved on with my life. There we go. There we go. Good job, Average Joe. Moving on. This is the school. We don't want to go there. We want to go to Sprout Tower. That's where we want to go. Where you want to go? Sprout Tower! That's just how it goes sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are in the introduction of Sprout Tower. The first little tidbit we get of it. Oh, when the dog is making noise. Oh, hello, buddy. She's having fun, she's pretty tired, but having fun with the Let's Play. And uh, yeah, Sprout Tower in this game honestly feels like a lot smoother than it did in the original Johto regions. I don't know why. I think uh, Sprout Tower used to have wild encounters and now it doesn't. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I do recall Sprout Tower, like, especially at night, there was a good chance that you would come across a ghastly. And I haven't seen a single one. I, I don't think I've had a single encounter in Sprout Tower in this Let's Play. Which I don't think was always the case. I think there was always the chance to encounter some wild Pokemon inside of Sprout Tower. I'm like 80% sure on saying that. Like it feels very, very accurate. I, I recall that to like almost a T. Like this is where I would get gasoline and sort of have some advantages. Thank you, motorcycle. It wouldn't have been the episode without a loud ass motorcycle making its way through. So thank you, motorcycle. I remember in the past, like, I would always get a Ghastly here, so that way when we would go against the normal type gym leader, which is coming up in a few episodes, we'd always have a Pokemon that resisted a lot of the moves. So, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember that. And, uh, yeah, it just it feels out of place if there's no wild Pokemon inside of Spark Tower. We are continuing our way through Sprout Tower. Let's pick up the Paralyzed Heal. Always a good item. Here we go, another trainer. Probably a bunch of Bell Sprouts, of course. But honestly, Hooter's doing a good job. I'm hoping Hooter gets like a flying type move here soon. And he's able to one shot a lot of these Pokemon. He's not taking too much damage, but it would be nice to get him at the same level as Gator. There we go. One sort of pop down the drain, and another one to be opened. Of course, folks. Hooter levels up. Good job, Hooter. Oh, yes. He wants to learn Peck. Perfect. Perfect timing, Hooter. Let's get rid of Foresight. Is that what it's called? Is that Foresight or is that Foreskin, baby? Woo! We're getting rid of our Foreskin! There we go. We learned Peck. 
Let's keep our Pokemon in there. Let's see what Peck does to the Bell Sprout. I'm assuming it's gonna be a one-hit KO for like everything else in the tower. That was a critical hit, so not fair to judge on that. Let's go with the pack again. There we are. Now we're going this way. Let's. What's this item here? This is an X accuracy, an item I will never use. Perfect. I don't like the X items personally. Not my cup of tea. Not if you like them, no offense, but they're just not my thing. We're just gonna pack the shit out of a bunch of bell sprouts. Because, I mean, why not give Hooter a bunch of EXP at this point? Oh, that one survived. Okay. That's not the end of the world, but I do want Hooter to be a little higher level then. It is odd that, like, a level 9 Hooter can't take out a level 5 Bell Sprout like, with a one hit peck. A super effective move. Okay, I did take him out the time. See, like, what the hell is going on? This is some RNG luck right here. That's what we're getting, ladies and gentlemen. Some RNG luck. Because this is level 5 again. I'm going to use peck. Maybe just some stat distribution or something like that, but. No, there we go, we got him again. But it really feels like Hooter should be one-hitting a lot of these Pokemon. Now he's level 10. Now he should, for sure, one-hit a lot of these Pokemon. It should be, no question, just plow your way through the rest of Sprout Tower. Come on, now. I think this is actually the final section of Sprout Tower. Is that a Pokeball over in the bottom left that I miss? Do I miss this one? Come on, Average Joe, don't miss it. I saw it there in the replay. Oh, he's got a little six bell sprout. How will Peck perform? Not a one-hit KO, but it's good. And Vine Whips, but yeah, it's not doing much. It's Hooters really earned his place in Sprout Tower. I'll give him that. He's done a good job. That's a lot of EXP for Hooter. But these guys here, they're really like a diamond does, and I get it, it's like early mode stuff. Like, there you go, Average Joe. There you go. Good job, buddy. But I do think we actually have our second rival fight here, which would be pretty fun coming up in a minute or two. Let's take on this guy. Oh, surprise, surprise, he's got a bell sprout! I was not expecting that. So this can be a two-hit KO again. It's a level six bell sprout. I mean, it's good to know consistently where we land with bell sprout, but I was hoping Hooter would have a little bit better stats. I don't even know when Hooter evolves. It could be like in his mid-30s. I do expect, just judged by, I know what level we can get Hooter's replacement at. And going off of that, I do think Hooter will evolve prior to that point in time, but it's always interesting to see like what level Pokemon evolve at. Oh, this is a level seven Bellsprout. Okay, this is gonna be a two hit for you for sure. Take them all. Okay, lots of EXP. At level 11 now. I think we're at the same level as Gator. 
So now, who, who, Gator, get out there, buddy. Come on, Gator. I wonder what level Gator evolves at. He doesn't have, like, a ton of moves right now. Which is really interesting for, like, a stage one Pokemon. Oh my god, he's gonna send me to sleep. He's gonna do this trolley stuff. Are you kidding me? Ah, Gator. Gator's people who... Where are Jimmy's? Come on. Come on, Gator. Get your Jimmy's on, man. Gator woke up. Gator's coming out. He's punch. He's coming at you. Okay, growl. That's good enough. A water gun should knock this guy out. We should be done. This should be enough for Gator. That's right, Gator lays him down. Good job, Gator. No level up there, but that's okay. You were good, little buddy. Okay, now I can see our rival here. So why don't we... Oh, shit. I stepped into it without healing. Okay, that's on me. I was trying to get as close as I could before healing without healing. And uh, that completely backfalls on me, folks. I'll take that one. That's a big L over here for average show. Nobody else. That's for me to take. Me to take and me to take only. But our rival just left. He didn't challenge us, which I was expecting. So I think, honestly, like, why even heal? Let's just go up against the leader of Sprout Tower. He, he can't be that challenging compared to everybody else. It, it cannot be that bad. I kind of wish we had a rival battle there, though. That would have made things a lot more exciting. Because this guy's just going to have a shitload of Bell Sprout. Like, it's... it's the rest of the episode. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. Over and over and over. That we're getting here. And, uh... Yeah. Not much too exciting with that. But it is what it is. So let's deal with it. There we go. Deal with that bell sprout. Okay, a hoo hoo. Thank you. I can send in Gator. This guy's gonna be trolly as hell. I already expect that. He's a level 10 shit. Okay, he's gonna be really trolly. Okay, thank god he missed. Jesus Christ, at this point. It's just annoying. Luckily, hypnosis does not hit very frequently. Growl, that's fine. I'd rather take those type of status conditions than hypnosis. It's it's annoying when a Pokemon gets sent to sleep. Especially because whenever I use it, it hits 0% of the time. <laughs> like, it is ridiculous. Almost infuriating at some points in time, but... There we go, Hoo Hoo is down. Gator grew to level 12, good job Gator. And Bellsprout's coming out again. I will switch to Pokemon. Because our Hooter is only at the whole level. So let's even the playing field here if we can. We likely cannot. Just judging off of where the Pokemon are. It is crazy that like a one-hit peck on a level 7 Bellsprout will not die from a level 11 Hooter. He must not have good special attack. That has to be what it is. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, there is only about a minute or two left in this episode. If you liked this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I greatly appreciate, it greatly motivates myself to make videos just like this now and in the near future. And it's free on your end, so hey, no harm, no foul. Um, if you like episodes like this, if you like this game, we'll be playing Pokemon Soul Silver on Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other week 
we'll be doing a Saturday, with this week being one of those cases. If you're looking for something a little bit more different, a little bit more RNG related, we will be playing Kingdom Hearts 2 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of this month and next month. So if you're looking for something just a little bit more modern or a little bit more different compared to this Let's Play, go ahead and check that out as well. But yeah, that's all I got for this episode. I hope you enjoy the maybe minute, two minutes and change here of this episode without my glorious voiceover backing it. But until the next time, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you all in the next one. I hope you all are having a snazzy start to your week and I hope you even finish it up even snazzier than you started it. Until the next one, everybody, take it easy and uh, as always, peace out, Girl Scouts. Let's go.